Okay, so I decided if I was ever going to get a video out again, I just needed to do it. So it's kitchen table. Kitchen table time. <laughs> uh, it has been quite a while since I've been putting, I put out a video, Kevin Strange, uh, and I wanted to go ahead and show some of the stuff I've been buying over the, the my months and months. Uh, a lot of this stuff is uh, sort of miscellaneous stuff, uh, either at flea markets or uh, on eBay. So uh, I'll try to remember what everything is. Um, awesome copy of Amazing Spider-Man Annual Number Three. It's got some. It's got some stress marks and things like that on the side. But for you know what I got it for, uh, I could not pass it up. Huge Spidey fan. Uh, I've got quite uh, quite the collection uh, of Spideys. It's probably the comic I have the most of. Uh, and that was a, a nice little addition. I thought I'd throw a new book in. Um, this is Fade Out. And it's an Ed Brubaker, uh, Sean Phillips book. And if you're familiar with Ed Brubaker, I mean, he did the whole Captain America sort of revival. Uh, the Bucky thing, the death of Captain America. And Sean Phillips, he's one of my favorite, favorite artists. Uh, he did um, you know, sort of more mainstream stuff. You might know uh, the Marvel zombie stuff. And this is sort of like a, a 19, uh, you know, 19, early 1940s uh, Hollywood sort of mystery. It's just an awesome book, fantastic. If you can find a copy uh, and you like sort of uh, mysteries and, and whodunit type things, that's a great book. Uh, I've been working on my Warlock connection, uh, collection. I used to have all of these, and I don't know what I did with them. I think I let somebody borrow them. So I've been rebuilding and you know you've got all of them. You got you got Marvel Premiere. You got the Warlock. You've got all these things. So um, I've been picking these up, and this one I got on eBay, really cheap, and it is a nice copy. And I always just love that cover. And this is like one of the uh, sort of relaunches, uh, the Starlin cover, the Starlin, uh, the Starlin issues, where we really start getting. Uh, sense and there's the Magnus back there. Really cool stuff if you've never read it. He's always been a big uh, favorite of mine. This um, this is just number two of the Demon, and I've always loved that Kirby cover. You know him up there and the people sort of walking in the frame. And uh, I actually got a amazing deal. Uh, Someone had something on uh, eBay, and they were from Canada, and they had a full Demon collection and a full um, Commandy collection, uh, and for create for cheap, no one was bidding on it because his shipping was insane. It was like sixty dollars or seventy five dollars. So I emailed him and I said, "Hey, you know, I've bought stuff from Canada before, and it's usually not that much shipping." He checks on it; it ends up being next to nothing for the shipping. He doesn't change it. I win the bid for like, I think I got, what, 60 Commandy? How many ever in the run? I can't remember. And all the demons, Kirby demons, uh, for, I think I paid $65 total, if that, plus $12 shipping. It was just incredible. Ah, uh, this one, a beautiful copy of... Hulk 271, the, I guess, second appearance, technically, first comic appearance, second appearance of uh, Rocket Raccoon. Uh, I was at a pawn shop, and the guy had had some comics upstairs, and then I said, do you have any more? And he's like, oh, yeah, I've got, like, 12 boxes downstairs. So I went downstairs, and in those boxes, I found this. And uh, I also found... A near complete collection of the second uh, Doctor Strange run and a near complete collection of the um, third Doctor Strange run which would be these and I just pulled this one out because I dug the sort of hologrammy kind of cover from the 90s so this would be the third series uh, Doctor Strange Sorcerer, Sorcerer Supreme so I found Almost a full run of these, almost a full run of the other ones, the old ones, and um, this Hulk 181, and then an Avengers annual that I think has the first Rogue in it. 
and I got them all for $100. I was quite surprised. I was quite surprised. Um, just to get this Doctor Strange collection, I was, I was amazed at. I'm going to put that over here and go back to that. Here's some Doctor Strange books. I got these on eBay. Um, I, think I, I think I got them for a pretty good price. The condition, they were really, really nice condition. I would put this one easily at a fine, uh, very fine. Uh, the cover is just like, there's not a blemish on it. It is beautiful. And this is one of my favorite uh, Doctor Strange covers. This is 171. This is sort of, you know, just after the switch over. I just, I love that cover. Obviously a huge Doctor Strange fan. And uh, these were, you know, I, I lucked out in finding these. Because the guy, uh, I can't remember his name. It's like Sam Co or something like that. Is the is the seller? He's got a, usually has a really a lot of high end stuff. And again, I got this one. Uh, just a fantastic copy. Just glossy cover. This is one seventy four. And you know, just love this. I love these books. These these Doctor Strange books. This cover is one of my favorite covers. You know, Strange in his astral form. And uh, the big baddie there, Demormu, or however you say his name. And just a really good copy. There's a little bit of nicking up here, a little bit of chipping. But other than that, it just the, car, the cover is just in amazing shape. Uh, I cannot remember what I paid for the, the bunch of these. Here's another one of my favorite covers. This is Doctor Strange 177. And you can see it again. Just these were just in great shape. You get a little blunting in some of the, on this corner over here uh, and the other corner, but you know it's still the cover is really pretty. Again, easily, easily a fine, fine minus, and that's being pretty strict. Uh, one of the things I kind of got on a kick on. Uh, I'm obviously a huge Vertigo fan. I've collected God everything, Preacher, Lucifer. Um, what else? Well, you name it. If it's Vertigo, all the books of magic, a swamp thing, everything. So, of course, when they said the Lucifer movie was going to come out, I decided to do a little checking. And um, I picked this up. This is uh, Jimmy Olsen, 65. And if you go on, if you go on um, Wikipedia or, you know, whatever, you know, the site you, know, you look up first appearances or whatnot, it says that this is the first appearance of Lucifer. Jimmy Olsen, 65. Now, not only is it just an iconic, crazy cover with him as the porcupine guy, human porcupine, which is a riot, it's uh, also, like they say, the first appearance of Lucifer. There's a, there's a sequence that shows, um, you know, a demon-y kind of guy, and he's got a beard and everything, and he says, I'm Lucifer. So technically, this is the, I guess, the first appearance. Uh, I looked it up in a few other places and it said that this was the first appearance of Lucifer. And, uh, I mean, I got it for $10 and it's just a cool Silver Age book anyway. And just fantastic shape. The cover is just beautiful. There's a gloss to it. I mean, yes, this is a Mylar, but the cover itself is just really nice. Uh, staples intact. And, uh, you know, I don't own any of these Jimmy Olsons. I'm not a huge DC Silver Age guy. So uh, this was just kind of fun to get. And again, you know, I, now that I've bought it, you know, I don't know, a month ago or so ago, I've seen that it's starting to go up uh, quite a bit higher. The other book they listed as, a, as, a, as a, an appearance, I don't know if they called it a second appearance or a historical appearance of Lucifer, was this book right here, Brave and the Bold. Presents, uh, you know, Batman and Deadman and Sergeant Rock. I mean, A, that's just, who would want to see all three of those in a book together anyway? Uh, Dead Man is one of my favorite characters. Uh, I've always been a fan of like the mystical stuff in the DCU and uh, in Vertigo books. So this is like, I guess, a historical appearance of Lucifer. And I think I got this for $2. And of course I have um, the modern appearance, the first appearance, uh, which is uh, Sandman 4. I have that one because I used to buy Sandman, collect that religiously. Um, I found this at a flea market that actually was the same uh, pawn shop that I found uh, all that other stuff. 
Uh, just a really good copy. I mean, just the corners are just tack sharp. You know, I would put this, I don't know, I would put this easily at a very fine. I mean, it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. And of course, that's the first Lobo. And it's not one I would have ever paid any sort of money money for, but, you know, I'll pay a dollar for it. Um, the other thing I've been doing is really working on my spideys, but we'll go back to, we'll go to that in a second. This is something I got a wild hair and I decided I was going to try to go for, and I got it for a fantastic price. Ta-da! Brave and the Bold. Kid I just made that kind of noise. I can't believe it. Brave and the Bold. Uh, number, uh, I totally forgot what number it is. What is it? 54? Uh, and it is the kid, the first appearance of the Teen Titans. Um, I've always been a huge Teen Titans fan, and uh, I never thought I'd actually be able to get this book. And it's not the quality, obviously, I'd want to give it. I get it. I would put it at probably uh, a VG plus, but uh, maybe yeah, maybe fine. But a VG, no, I'd say VG plus. And uh, but it is still a perfect. It's in great condition. I mean, there's. The, the corners are obviously a little bit rough here and there, but the staples are intact. The cover's got a little bit of a shine to it. There's no you know, markings on the cover. And, I mean, a book like this is just always going to go up. I mean, Teen Titans are always going to be around. And to see the first appearance, you know, to have that of the Titans, I was, this is something I really, I've always wanted. And I got on eBay, and, it, you know, I haven't been winning a lot on eBay. There's not a lot of shops around where I am. And, you know, my job is crazy and family, and so I don't get to go, like, hunt, hunt. You know, I try to every once in a while. There's not a lot of places to go where I am, so I, like, hunt on eBay. And I'll watch tons of different things, and I'll see which one I can get for the price I want. Uh, it isn't, you know, as fun as leafing through boxes, but, you know, hey, beggars can't be choosers. Uh, like I said earlier, I'm working on some of my, uh, finishing up some of my Spidey stuff. So here's a copy of Spider-Man 71, and unfortunately this one got up there in price because it's got Quicksilver in it, and he's going to be in all the movies, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, I got to transfer it out of this bag. This is a horrible bag, and the backing board is way too small. But, uh, you know, amazing Spider-Man 71, uh, VG, VG+. Plus. Great shape. Uh, this is something I saw, of course, on all everybody else posting pip, them picking up. This is uh, Flash 165, first Rogues appearance. All the Rogues. Uh, great copy. I could not believe I got it. I think I got it for like $20. And this is a fine easy uh, all day long. Uh, and I was just like, I could not believe I got it for that. It's one of those ones where, I don't know, people didn't check back and they, they that was it. I got it. Now I'm a huge Flash fan. I've got like a full run of the Wallies, and I've got a huge, huge run of these. Um, I'm missing maybe 30, 40 of them, if that. Um, if you haven't seen the show, The Flash, you know, check out Hulu or wherever you use to watch TV uh, and check that out. It was, I was impressed. I loved it, to be honest with you. Uh, and the end will just make you go, what? Great show. This is something I found at a, a, um, a little small comic book shop. I never saw it before. It's a, it's not an Aquaman title. It's a super giant size, super DC giant. And um, it's Aquaman King of the Sea. It's a n number 26. And it's in pretty rough shape. I mean, the staples are pretty much off on that over there. They're just barely holding on here. I think they're totally off. Um, but I ended up getting it for a dollar. And I figured, why not? You know, there's, it's pretty color breaks, tears. But for a dollar, old uh, old Silver Age Aquaman, I'm always in, in the market for. And actually, what this also has is, this is from this guy here. You might recognize him from the cover of one of the of the first Aquaman number one. This has got the, the reprint of the story, of the origin. You can see it says, the origin of Aquaman. I think I got this on vacation when I was in California. I think I got this in Berkeley somewhere. 
Uh, what do we got here? Some Aquamans. One of my favorite covers of the old uh, old Silver Age stuff. I've been working on my collection of these. Uh, I've got quite a few of them. This is number 30. Love that cover. Go through some of these. There's another one. Again, just beautiful. <laughs> Look at it, Walrus. He's like, huh? Oh. Uh, really, just the colors in this, you know, I'm a big fan of colors in a comic, colorist in a comic, and uh, this is just, uh, I just love the colors in these. Just really good shape. I got these all in, in one lot. What's this, 38? Justice is the liquidator. Just ridiculous bad guys. But really, books were really in nice shape. I couldn't believe I got them all. There's another one. And this is, um, yeah, this is Aquaman 11. This is the first appearance of Mira. His wife. And I didn't pay 20. I think I paid something like maybe 11. Again, it was one of those ones I lucked out on and I was getting it early enough where... You know, I probably got this about three months ago, four months ago, but in really nice shape. You know, with these black covers, it's really tough. I mean, it's obviously not solid black here and there. There's some smudges, uh, especially up in that corner there, but nothing really major. And just a cool looking book. Uh, some later ones, of course, this is the whole one where, unfortunately, uh, his son dies. I mean, that's rough. I mean, this is like a five-year-old kid. I mean, this wasn't like, you know, your teenage sidekick or your 20-year-old sidekick. This, you know, they say Aquaman's a lightweight or whatnot. I mean, how many other superheroes, you know, infants have been murdered by one of their, by one of their uh, nemesises? Or nemesis I? I don't know how you even say that. But really in just a, a fantastic and in, in shape book. And this is from a great shop in my area where... They, uh, they grade strictly. So when this says it's a fine plus, it is a fine plus. And all their stuff is half off. So I got this for three bucks. I may actually stop by there today if I finish, uh, finish the work I need to get done. Uh, another run I'm working on is um, sort of uh, Animal Man Keys. And this is a, an early Animal Man. I think it's the third appearance of Animal Man. It's Strange Adventures 195. So this is the second time he's in costume. And I got this, I can't remember how much. Again, it wasn't 20 bucks. I think it was from the same guy. Because that's the same sticker for sure. And uh, just a really nice shaped book. And I've got 190 as well. I, I should have showed you that one. That's the first time he's in his costume. And... Uh, Animal Man has always been a huge fan of mine back to the Grant Morrison years, and I've never seen these early ones, and uh, I wanted to start picking them up. Unfortunately, I cannot find 180, which is his first appearance, for anything less than insane money. So, you know, if anybody's got a copy of that, that they're looking to move for not insane money, I remember, I cannot remember who it is, but one of you guys, in one of your videos, said you found it in the back of the box and got it for $4. This was a while back. And uh, I'm always, I always think about that when, I, when I'm trying to buy one of these. But uh, it's a book that, you know, I'm hoping to get, you know, this year. Because it's, it's it, it would be really, uh, it would really mean something to me. Uh, some more Warlocks. Uh, this is the, his title, The Power of Warlock. Uh, I got these at a show, a local small show. Just great shape. The guy had a half off box, so I think I got this for two dollars. You know, again, he's one of my favorites. They hold Infinity Gem on his forehead, you come to find out. There's another one. Number's that number seven. So now I think I just need number one, and I've got his run, The Power of Warlock, the that first run. I've got all the Marvel premiere I I uh, issues, uh, his first appearance as Warlock. And now I just need number one of this one. Or I think, wait, it's number one of this one. His. He's got a very convoluted history. Once I finish the run, I'll go ahead and show. Um, I'll show everything. 
and sort of do one of those Constantine ones I did, but on a Warlock. And something I just got the other day that I've been trying to get is Fantastic Four 66. And this is the first appearance of Warlock as him. And I looked through it and I didn't see him in here. And I think it's just li literally the last panel. So I'm wondering if this is considered the first appearance uh, or if it's 67. But, you know, you see it listed as the first appearance in some places. And in some places you see 66 and 67. I'd be curious about people's, uh, get people's input on that. But either way, I'm looking for a good copy of 67 as well. Uh, but this is just in beautiful shape. The cover is glossy. The corners are tight. There's a little bit of chipping on the back cover, which is unusual. You usually see it in the front cover on the side here. But this cover is just tight all the way around. And I did pay a little bit for it, more than I probably wanted. I think I paid like $35. Um, but still, for what it was, it was another one I lucked into. And I actually think what happened with this one is the bidding went up to 50 but then the guy dropped out or something for some reason, and it dropped back down to me for 35 just before it ended. Uh, which I didn't even know you could do that, but apparently you can. So uh, I ended up getting it. So there is uh, some of my finds, eBay finds, and and whatnot for the past few months. I have got literally two long boxes full of this type of stuff that I'll be showing uh, hopefully more regularly. And uh, just so you get a sample of my uh, new stuff, this stuff here is what uh, I uh, are my new books that uh, I got this month or the past couple months that I have not even read yet so actually you know let's go through these really quick see if there's something I can recommend I got some stuff for my son I'm curious is anybody reading the future's end and what do they think about it it's pretty cool I got a bunch of these articulating or reticulate cover covers or whatever you call them where they move around those are pretty neat uh, I've been in, getting into this Batman universe I love Batman Beyond so that's pretty cool the Spider-Verse we'll see how that's going to turn out more of these covers Spideyverse. Look at that cover. That's a great. That's a great cover. But yeah, just a bunch of these sort of. I guess this is a tricky one to find. I think I saw this on Mercenaut's video. Uh, I order all my books. In case you guys don't know of this company, I use a company called DCBS. It's the website is DCB Service, and you order your books and they, they're mailed to you. I've been using them for about four years and every book is 40 to 50 percent off and some of them they'll have specials that are 70 percent off and then it's like 6.95 to ship them to you and you can either have them shipped to you once a month or twice a month and you cannot go wrong I mean you know I spend about sixty dollars a month but really that's almost hundred and twenty dollars a month so uh, check it out DCB service uh, more of these uh, articulating covers. This one is just awesome. One of my favorites. Constantine, boom. Helmet of Fate. That's great. This has been really good if you're a Batman fan. I've really been digging this Batman Eternal. It has uh, some weaknesses, but it's got some really good ones too. Uh, the Flash. Just to sleep dark. Great book. If you're a fan of the, you know, the mystical stuff and the weird stuff in the DCU, this is a definite book to be picking up. Uh, now, uh, Jam Demades is writing it, and it is just really, it's just really cool. I actually had a chance to talk to um, Guy Falks, who does, uh, who does uh, Constantine. He took over from Jeff Lemire, and he, uh, it was really fun talking to him because I've seen him a few times at his show. And he was very happy to hear. I told him I was going to give the book a chance because, you know, Jeff Lemire was on it and I was a huge collector. And one thing I was really happy to hear 
was that he collected and has all the Vertigo stuff. So he's a fan. So if you sort of dismiss Constantine or Constantine, it's uh, technically it's Constantine. If you were uh, a fan of the old Constantine but didn't give this one a chance, uh, I read them all. I've got every Constantine book, uh, and I really enjoy this series. So you might you might want to give it a chance. More of these sort of crazy covers. Of course, I've got a ton of Batman Eternal because in fifty two the Future's End because they're weekly. They come out like. For, you know, a billion of them come out. The Green Arrow one is really cool. More Futures End. Spidey 2099. If you're a Spidey, Spidey fan, this has been a pretty good book. Uh, I don't know how much... You know, I'll, I'll go to 10 with it and we'll see, but, um, you know, it's it's I'm enjoying it. This book right here has got to be one of my favorite titles that I've been reading. Uh, it's called Outcast, and it's a uh, Robert Kirkman book, you know, from Walking Dead and Invincible. If you love superhero stuff and you've never read Invincible, pick up a trade. It is literally one of the best superhero books you will ever read. But this book, this book is just very, this book is very creepy. The writing in it is very smart. It is very real. Uh, it is, um, it's disturbing. It's creepy. Uh, it's, it's, it's about possession and, and demons and stuff, but done in a really interesting way. Um, very dark. Um, number one, if you can find it, grab them. I guess they've already, um, this has already been optioned for a movie and, uh, I had lucked out. I was in a store and I, they had I think like 10 of them still on the shelf and I picked up uh, five number ones just to have and it's up to number four now so you can still and you can still pick up number one is a uh, here and there relatively cheap but uh, fantastic book uh, some Spidey stuff learning to crawl these are these amazing um, Alex Ross covers he's back to doing mainstream stuff Aquaman those things freak me out You know, I don't collect Superman, but I thought I'd pick up a bunch of these covers just because I, I just love them. They just look so cool. And, you know, I'm not paying $3.99 through DCBS. I'm paying, you know, half of that, which would be two. See how I did that math? And there's the new Constantine, which looks really cool. So, yeah, if you read the old one, you didn't give this one a chance because you're like, ah, it's not, he's not going to be as badass. Um... You know, Guy Fawkes is trying, and he's trying to make it interesting and cool and and real, and I think he does a really good job. A few more of those covers. This is my favorite one, this Swamp Thing one. It's like Swamp Thing, and then he's like this metallic thing. More Batman Eternal, because like I said, it's a weekly book, so there's a million of them. Uh, Spider-Verse, I'm looking forward to reading that. Booster Gold, this is probably the worst cover. I think it looks ridiculous, but I wanted to read it because I, I kind of like Booster Gold. Future's End. And here's a book if you're not reading. This uh, the relaunch of uh, Daredevil. Amazing art, amazing colors. Uh, Mark Wade. And uh, what they've done is they've taken Daredevil out of Hell's Kitchen and he's in San Francisco. So it's really interesting that it's kind of throwing off his senses. He doesn't know where things are. They're not bouncing off the right things anymore for him. And he's kind of lost. So, uh, you know, if you're a Daredevil fan, uh, check that one out. It's been pretty cool. But there's my uh, old stuff that I've been buying. And here's the new stuff that I still need to work on. And <laughs> read through. But uh, I've got a lot of work to do today, so I will probably not be able to read any of these, unfortunately. Uh, next video will be another stack of the old stuff that I've been picking up here and there. Uh, maybe some more new stuff that I, I can recommend. And uh, I'll go through and show you uh, the 33 boxes of comics that I bought at a uh, from somebody who didn't want to do their flea market anymore. Uh, I'll just show you those and leaf through some of the, the gems I found in there. All right, thanks a lot, guys. I really appreciate it. I've been loving watching all the videos. Sorry I haven't been able to post. I just moved. 
then I moved three different houses into the one house. <laughs> it's been a really crazy, it's been a crazy summer and a crazy, uh, I got married this summer, eloped. Uh, so it's been crazy. So, um, but I, I've been loving the videos. I love the community. I think what happens, we get, you know, those of us who do these videos that are, you know, older, you know, you start not being able to hang out with your buddies anymore and talk comics. So it's nice to be able to watch everyone's videos and post and then and talk comics this way. So I uh, really uh, I love the community. I appreciate everyone who's ever subbed on my boards and I'll, you know, work to get some more videos out. But um, right now I need to go. So all right, I'll see you guys later. Thanks a lot.